Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything. So don't even ask. Seriously. How's it growing everyone? With the Green Sunshine Company taking care of our NPK, there's only one issue we've been noticing. Magnesium. So, get in here because we're going to talk to you about what we'll be using, why it's so crucial, and how to correct a deficiency if it comes up. Let's go. Alright guys, so as you know, we have two plants going per the usual here at Beginner Buds. We got a Lucky Charms and a Caramel Frappe by THC Tone Genetics and again, we've already learned a few things. For one, we may have officially learned what may be too much. At five tablespoons per gallon, at least for our growing abilities, it seems to be stunting the plant and veg and, as we all know, a stunted veg stunts the entire size of the plant and thus your We're gonna run with it for now and see what happens, but that's not the only thing we have to report. Come to find out, the caramel frappe that did pop turned out to be a mutant. We're basically expecting the plant to hermaphrodite at any point and are checking them daily to make sure. That said, we're letting her grow out for now, but if she hermes, she's gone. With that anticipation in mind, we may make a new brew using four tablespoons per gallon as we saw much more vigorous growth with that ratio. If the caramel frappe does hermy, we'll probably just pull her and start two new beans, another Lucky Charms and caramel frappe with the revised nutrient ratios and see how they compare right before our eyes. Now that that's out of the way, let's just get to how things should be. In this stage of growth, things are fairly simple. The Green Sunshine Company has made it easy on us by handling the NPK ratios, ensuring that the plant gets what they need in terms of primary nutrients. Earth dust also contains millions of beneficial microbes and fungi, meaning that it will replenish everything in our medium to keep things breaking down for the plant. There's just one problem we've been having, and that's magnesium. So, we picked ourselves up some Roots Elemental to solve the problem. In all, the mixture contains the proper 4 to 1 calcium to magnesium ratio and even has a touch of sulfur in it, making it a very well-rounded product for secondary nutrients. Now, we call them secondary, but that doesn't make them any less important. Granted, that's the case for any nutrient in that, without it, the plant would not be able to grow, let alone exist in the first place. But let's take a deeper look as to why magnesium is so important and what to do if your plant begins to show a deficiency. All right, so here, the object on the right is a chlorophyll molecule. At the center of every chlorophyll molecule is a magnesium ion. And in fact, magnesium makes up to 6.7% of every chlorophyll molecule. It's what molecule. technically makes chlorophyll green. See the green magnesium ion in the center of the magnified chlorophyll molecule? We all think chlorophyll is green. It's actually magnesium that makes the chlorophyll green. That said, without magnesium, there is no green and no chlorophyll. The plant can't take up sunlight because there isn't the dark green pigment to attract and absorb the sun's rays, and that's just the start. From there, magnesium, specifically its part in being the central piece to chlorophyll, is needed for the plant to feed itself through photosynthesis. We explain this a little deeper in our PAR video, so if you're looking to understand the photosynthetic process a little deeper, go check that out. We'll link it in the description. But essentially, what this means is no separating water molecules and no creating carbohydrates, fats, or sugars. Without magnesium, there's nothing. But like we said before, as dramatic as it sounds, it's technically the same for any nutrient that is necessary for plant growth. Magnesium is known as a problematic nutrient by many growers, showing that it can be tricky to dial in. 
I mean, if you become deficient in magnesium, your plants may not even tell you by showing a physical symptom. It could merely stay smaller, thereby needing less of the nutrient overall, all while still keeping everything else above the sufficient levels. In other words, the first sign of deficiency is slowed growth. Typically, if a deficiency does progress enough to show, it could take up to four weeks for the plant to exhibit physical signs, including yellowing between the veins of your leaves, red on either the leaf stems or the main stem, before eventual browning of the leaves as they quote unquote, pray for magnesium by drying and curling upward. Remember though, even if it does take those four weeks, or if the plant never even shows any other physical symptoms, growth will be throttled because of the slight deficiency, which will most certainly negatively impact your yields. It's that important to get this ratio right. So what do we do if it does progress that far and we do start to see some of these symptoms? Well, if magnesium consists of 6.7% of each chlorophyll molecule, then imagine how much of the total plant is magnesium. We have to give it the levels we need by feeding a CalMag of some kind. This is where the Roots Elemental came in for us. Now, I just want to make a very important note here. It is easy to go too hard with nutrients containing magnesium. Too much and the plant will burn, which is why smaller, more frequent feedings, usually about every other week, are suggested. We got a hold of the guys over at Roots and they gave us some pretty helpful information. Basically, feed rates are as follows. Top dress, one to two teaspoon per gallon of medium based on this stage of the plant's growth every two weeks. Wanna just mix it in water? Roots suggested using a rate of one teaspoon per gallon of water. Mix, water, done. That's what we did and the stuff's working great. There's just one catch. The smell. My gosh. Perhaps to some, this may be a reasonable trade-off considering what a phenomenal product Elemental is, but this stuff reeks. Open the bag, stink. Mix it to either the water or soil, the stink intensifies. It gets pretty rough and leaves the entire grow room smelling like decomposing fish for days on end. To us, that's not ideal. Don't get us wrong, it's a great product in terms of what it's advertised to do. Absolutely no complaints, but the smell is just too much for us. We've already sought out our next option and decided to go with the organic kale mag that Homegrown Bokashi offers. They say it's nice and light and even better yet, doesn't come with any of those fishy smells or nasty smell for that matter. They promised. I'm sure you guys will see that incorporated in this season, but we'll get to that when, well, whenever it gets here. It <laughs> should be soon. We're excited. That is it for this week, guys. But if you didn't know, we are hosting a grow off on Instagram if you would like to grow along with us. It's our May the 4th grow off using the hashtag BudsGrowOff. We'll be using that hashtag for future grow offs, but essentially anyone is welcome to join. Autos, photos, doesn't matter as long as the strain is Star Wars themed. Germination, however you do it, paper towel, soil, solo cups, begins on May 4th. And this is just too fun. May the 4th be with you guys. Come find us on Insta to get in on it, and we'll see you back here on Friday for our weekly Positivity Live on Friday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Until then, keep learning, keep growing. Catch, Catch you later, guys. guys.